What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great day. Uh, some teams are out there working on getting their cap house in order, and one of the ones that's in the worst shape right now is the Buffalo Bills, at least before we have... Um, the people that are being cut right now, they're working on getting themselves under. I guess the Cowboys are going to say, we're winning. We're going to be the last one. <laughs> we'll be the last one to get up under the cap. But the Buffalo Bills are gutting their roster right now. They have released just a few minutes ago their center, Mitch Morris, um, who was due to make $8.5 million in salary this season. Um, he was a pro bowler in 2022, played in all 17 games, and you'll remember how good they were at running the football against us. So they're working on trying to get themselves underneath the cap. Uh, they've also released all pro safety Jordan Pryor. And if I look at the bills, let's look at uh, their numbers here, because this is where this is the thing that if you're all in, Early on, there's opportunities to get some guys that can really help you. Now, you know, we, we keep focusing in on Dak Prescott's contract number. Uh, Josh Allen, FYI, is $47 million. Pat Mahomes is $57 million. And Deshaun Watson is 62. But it's only Dak Prescott that's got a, a issue there. Now, here's where it's kind of really kind of cray-cray is as the Bills are cutting people, Von Miller has been an albatross that's been around their neck. Um, his cap number for this year is $23.7 million. And unfortunately, cutting him will be $32 million in dead money. So that's not a good situation there. But let me look down and see on Jordan Pryor. Let's see if they've already gotten this updated. Jordan Pryor. I don't see it. So they must have already gotten it updated. Ed Oliver, yeah, they must have already taken that out of the equation because I don't see it in there. Yep, I see Mitch Morris. Okay, so Mitch Morris was due a cap number of eleven point five, um, so they'll save eight point five million <clears throat> with uh, three million being uh, dead money. Not the worst situation. At least they're only incurring uh, three million. Uh, Jordan Pryor. I don't see Jordan on here. I don't see Jordan Pryor's numbers. But here's where it may be interesting that the Bills realize that um, we've got some issues here and we've got to get some cap space. This may be where the Buffalo Bills have been looking. You know, we've been a playoff team for several years. Maybe we need to start looking at rebuilding. And with the emphasis on running the football, of course, getting rid of Mitch. Uh, Morris um, kind of hurts that running game, but it seems like they're going to be more run-centric, which you could see that Stefan Diggs ended up being um, used less and less down the stretch, and of course he's always a distraction. And this may be the case where they look and say, if there's a way we can trade Stefan, and the problem with Stefan Diggs is his cap number is $27 million. And the dead money amount would be 31 if he's a pre-June 1st. If he's a trade pre-June, no, no savings in a pre-June 1st trade, damn. Post-June 1st trade, um, they would save $19 million on this year. So it would behoove them to move him post-June 1st. The only problem with that is you don't get the draft picks for this year. So that makes it a little bit more difficult as opposed to traded before and I don't know this is one thing I don't know is if they can do a post June 1st trade designation and trade them before and I will do some research to find that one out but you know with what's going on in the NFL there are good players out there that can fill a bill if you want if the Cowboys and this is the thing that's kind of crazy to me is if the Cowboys really want to change the narrative, there's things that they can do. If you think about this, okay, if you any holes that you can fill in 
with legitimate starters. I'm not talking about bottom tier ones. I'm talking about you need to get a couple of really good players. Um, Mitch Morris is 31 years old. Again, pro bowler the year before. Played all 17 games. He would definitely be an upgrade over Biotish. If you can sign a guy like that and you move Tyler Smith over to tackle, now all of a sudden you don't have the urgency as much on the offensive line. If you end up bringing back, let's say, Tony Pollard, which is one option that seems to be out there, or better yet, we're kind of fighting it out, uh, or at least rumors-wise, we're fighting it out with the Eagles uh, about like Saquon, and of course there's Derek Henry out there, as well as other running backs. If you can do that right there, now all of a sudden you're in a better suited place, and let's say you go out and you actually get a legitimate, not not a over-the-hill broke down guy for a year or two. If you go out and get a legitimate linebacker, now all of a sudden you're in a position to draft the best player available. Because at 24, the thing about the draft is you don't know what you don't know. You don't know who's going to be falling. You don't know what the run is going to be. We know, you know, probably at least three and maybe as many as five quarterbacks may be taken before you. So the way you look at this is if there's five quarterbacks drafted, Okay, that means there's 19 more picks ahead of us, right? We're not interested in the quarterback. I know Jack Prescott haters will say differently. So now you look at it and say, you know that there's probably going to be three tackles taken, three left tackles. Okay, so now that moves you down to about 17. You know about three wide receivers will probably be taken before then. So, okay, all of a sudden that gets you down to, you know, about 14. Edge rushers, you know, about three or four of those guys will be taken care of. So that gets you down to 10. But what may happen is, is sometimes you get a run on a position and now all of a sudden everybody's getting worried about, I might not be able to get my guy. And then all of a sudden it's defensive edge rushers, you know, edge rushers that are going off the board like crazy. And then nobody's thinking about offensive linemen as much. And you may end up having like a great guard or even a left tackle that fall to you. And that's where you want to be in a position to draft the best player available. And there's things the Cowboys can do. Um, You're seeing other teams having to cut uh, a lot of players to get cap space. The Cowboys don't need to cut anybody because Lord knows we got 16 spots we got to fill. They can redo Dak's contract. They can redo CD's uh, contract and get cap room to be able to get some of these players. If they want to get even more money, they can restructure some of these uh, contracts and go later on. If they want to get a draft pick and potentially five and a half million dollars, you could trade Trey Lance to somebody and get an additional draft pick. And, you know, right now, I'm looking and saying five and a half million dollars might be enough for you to go out and get a linebacker. It might be enough to get you a running back. It might be enough to get you an offensive lineman. And this is the way you have to look at this. And I know that we may be gambling and saying that, you know, maybe Trey Lance might end up being our quarterback of the future. And if you honestly believe that, then you don't trade him. But it could be a Steve Walsh situation where, you know, we can get something for him and we don't think that he's necessarily going to be great. And this is the sense of urgency that Dan Quinn said that the Cowboys didn't have. And this is where us as fans, we see players out there that can do stuff that can help your team. Now, that's not to say that it's without risk. You look at Buffalo when they signed Von Miller, they ended up thinking they were going to get you know an all pro. And unfortunately, Von Miller has been, he's been seen more on his podcast than he's actually been seen on the field. And they're going to need to figure out something on that one to try and soften the blow. But Von Miller is pretty much done. So there we are. There's a center out there that you could get. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you can get bold and try and get Stefan Diggs. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. And I will see you soon. Peace.